being able to, you know, express certain opinions about religion or uh, whatever he got. Uh, that's why I always, that's why I was always drawn to it. I ought to have a folk art rant right now while I'm at it. A folk art label rant, because it's all been kind of eating at me, you know. I went to college. I drew as a kid, as you all know, you go to my website, you know how I feel about this. I, you know, drew as a kid. I, I liked comic books. I was influenced by comic books because I liked to tell stories. So I drew comic books as a kid. Wish I still had them. They got thrown out. I don't know where they are. And um, I didn't even want to go to college. My mother said, you're going to go to college. So um, I got a scholarship to an art school. <clears throat> it was basically like bait and switch. You know, they give you a small scholarship and then you're like on the hook for four years, you know, chunking over money, you know, to go through. And so I went, I like I did everything they told me to do and wasn't, it had no thoughts about what I copied, whatever I could copy to get me through. Sometimes I did something, you know, that was a little bit like just on my own because I, you know, was it anything, you know, to copy from. But when you're in college, you're influenced by the kids that are around you and the culture you come from. Uh, but I was really isolated as a kid, so I didn't, uh, I, I wasn't, I didn't have a lot of cultural influences, uh, but I was influenced by the, the, the other kids that were with me in school. <clears throat> so, you know, I kind of regurgitated some of that crap, but it, well, I did, so there you go. Um, and I got out, you know, you need a job and you do what you got to do, and uh, you try to, you know, it's a huge thing, confusing thing. But at, at some point, I just, you know, realized, well, I started when I built, worked on my houses, I, I, I built things, like I started to make some wood things with tools. Well, was I influenced by anything? Well, yeah, the tools I had at hand. Um, you know, I stumbled around with a few ideas, uh, but I didn't know, I didn't even know, what, I didn't know, know what the term, I didn't, never heard the term folk art. Certainly never heard the term outsider, right? I didn't pay any attention to art history when I was in school, and they didn't, there was none of that stuff, or if it was, it was, I don't remember. I don't remember seeing any, but I remember like, um, uh, oh, what am I trying to think of? Like um, some famous abstract artist like Pollock and uh, Moreau, one of my favorites. Of course, I couldn't remember his name right then. Uh, but I hated them. I liked the realistic stuff because that's what people were doing around me in school. So I gravitated towards that. But now, of course, I'd rather have a Pollock or Moreau. <laughs> It's a piece of art, but <clears throat> to get back to it, so you know, I make it this stuff, and I don't know anything about any of these kind of labels. And um, somebody once said, "Well, this looks like folk art." I don't, I don't have any idea what you're talking about. So there happens to be a big folk art collector in in, in town, a, a man and a woman. They live in their house, and the house is just jam packed full of this stuff. And they happen to live right by this person that I work with. So I went over to their house one day, and I just walked through the house, just stunned. You know, like this was great. It was everything that I ever wanted to do, express as an artist. And they were pointing out like finsters. They had finsters and all this stuff. And I had no idea who this guy was, even though I, you know, loved the Talking Heads and had the album where they did the cover for. I didn't know that was him. Eventually, I, I put, you know, two and two together and realized it was him. And, and what I took from Finster to extend this story is that um, he wrote on his artwork. Now, when I was in college, we had an assignment to illustrate um, things like motion. And I, in my illustration, I wrote on it, <laughs> like fast or something. I don't remember what it was. But I, I got a world of shit heaped down upon me by the instructor saying, you can't write on your artwork. So for years, I thought, well, I can't write on my artwork. And I then started writing on my artwork. And then I saw Finster's, you know, stuff realize, well, hell, it was okay that I did that, you know, and, uh, but see, I was, you know, worried about, so much worried about pressures and things that all the things, you know, like I talked about before, most artists can't rise above their environment because it's really, really hard. It's really hard to rise above those cultural uh, and environmental things, those pressures. Okay, so we're, so, so, so anyway, that, that was that seeing that folk art collection, I realized that. Now, I didn't realize the trouble I was getting myself into, that I couldn't be a folk artist, right? I didn't realize there were limitations because I, I did go on to school and, and I, you know, I couldn't call myself that. I had no idea. It wasn't until um, 
about a year ago when I started doing this YouTube thing and getting heavily, you know, like really focusing on this this work that I do, that I started looking around and looking at labels and, uh, you know, realized that there was a problem. <laughs> so, like, I went through this whole thing. If you paid any attention, like how difficult it is to come up with some way to pigeonhole myself, and I did. And the only reason I did it, I think, is because I, I I wanted people to see the art, so I needed something, you know, some like sort of some kind of keyword that I could use that would draw people to what I what I do. But it was difficult to use those keywords. Um, I just couldn't because I realized that I you know I would be laughed at, laughed you know, I guess 